All right, Nick. Uh, talking about Pro Advisor Coach today. What uh, what's Pro Advisor Coach's process? Why is it valuable? Well, we were just you know talking about coaching, 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 and it's 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 always like an interesting conversation to have because anyone listening like well of course they like coaching they're coaches of course they get like they think it's valuable they're coaches it's just more like explaining why like how i got to this point i think that coaching by itself is like pure coaching by itself is super super valuable because it's creating an environment which you have responsibility for yourself and using this person as a someone to bounce it off of having consistency over time is results asking questions that you wouldn't ask you know challenging you and noticing things that you just wouldn't notice you just don't because you're just not in the same position right that's like you're in you're in the game of your life you're playing it super intensely and your your coach can just sit on the sidelines and see it differently like just the way it is right it doesn't it's not that person is better than you. That person is worse than you. That person is any, any way, shape, or form different necessarily. It's just that they can see things in a different perspective. And that's where you get coached from. I, I got the vision in my mind of like a sports reference here, warning, upcoming. Uh, quarterback throws a touchdown, throws an interception, comes back to the bench. What's the first thing the coach does? He hands him the, uh, you know, the, the slip sheets or I guess – today's day and age it's the ipad but they're looking at things that they didn't see or couldn't have seen from their perspective out in the field um but that's, that's interesting to us like we, you know we live our lives a certain way and then just coming to an awareness i guess of or, or questioning are, are the things in our life serving us for you know on our on our road to getting what we want and sometimes get, getting another perspective or somebody who's a professional who does that for a living um, can be very valuable. Yeah, I mean, because you start to get momentum. Right? Well, you, you can do this. One person can do this for anyone. What, like, it's the difference is having uh, a, a defined arrangement for how you do it. And of course, when you've done it a lot, then you pick up things that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. That that person does start to get different perspectives. You, know, you could. I'm sure that like, we all have like really good friends of ours that can give us different perspectives. Like, hey, Nick, I know you better than yourself. I knew that you were going to do that. What? Then but that person has known me for 25 years, right? <laughs> so it's sense that they can do that. But not everyone has that in their life. And I don't get to speak to that, those people as much. And they're, you know, they're, they're not professionals in the way that they get to their outcomes or your outcomes in the case maybe. But you just start coaching for a living and do this. You, you're a professional, like you do this every day. You know, sometimes five, six, ten times a day. And you just can't help but see patterns, you can't help but hear things in different ways. So like, oh, yep, that person, that's, that doesn't help. That, <laughs> yeah. Things like that just show up. You know? And then that's all comes from a commitment to playing at the highest level, you know, making sure that that person sees the things that they're doing that are great. The things that they aren't doing so great, also they're aware of those. But you mentioned that awareness you know, it has to start with awareness. Awareness is not enough most times, but without it, you can't even start. And to your point, in order to achieve that awareness, it's what we're doing is creating the space for it being okay to have the conversation, right? So I try yeah. to think of you know people who. I talk to a number of people who, who say like, you know, I, I enjoy or look forward to the coaching sessions because you know, it might be that their family or their group of friends, it's not really an acceptable conversation to talk about success or personal development. Um, maybe if I could challenge you a little bit, like before you were a coach, how many of your, your friends, family, et cetera, like talked about it or whatever. Like if you fast forward your, your coaching career to today, it's probably a, a, a larger percentage of people that you associate with that regularly have conversations about success or achievement or happiness or whatever. Is that, is that true? 100%. Yeah. Especially coming from working in a corporate environment where most people, not everyone, most people are there because it's a paycheck because they thought it was the right thing to do. 
that, and then it got stuck in patterns. So most people run those patterns and the environment is created based on people's actions and behavior, behavior and actions. So it's constantly pulling you to that, that place. Like your gravity is, is going that direction. Now. Can you share, share a little bit about your background? So what, where were you before you entered the coaching world and what was it that made you catapult into that? Before I started wearing shirts like this. <laughs> so it's a for everyone who's watching, it's a beach weekend, a beach week, sorry. Uh, oh, here he's yeah, still, still doing true seekers. Yeah. Well, I worked for 20 years in big banks you know, all over the world. And well, some people do better than others. Some people could do things effortlessly. Some people had a real big problem with it. And it was never, it didn't seem to me, like it didn't seem to me like this question of capability. That was always drilled into me. There's like, well, those people must be cleverer, smarter. But it wasn't really the case when it came down to doing the activity. I, I always found for me is that, I, I remember doing this trade support role Probably like the, I've been, I was working from the second bank and I've probably been working seven or eight years at that point to take over this, this supporting this particular equity trading desk. And there was one person that knew it and then she was moving onto a different desk. So she wasn't really available to train me. And it was a two person role and it was just me. And I didn't know what I was doing. And that, at that time, it just felt like it was an impossibility. I just it felt like it wasn't. I just I didn't I I was not capable of doing that. But I I believe that that was the best opportunity that I had in that role in that bank. And I just showed up and did it every day for ten hours straight. Why did Why did you believe it was the best opportunity? How did you know that? I just I. Well, I didn't. I just decided to, I guess. Like, well, this is, this is the only opportunity. This is all I got. And I, I didn't go to university and I didn't, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just fell into banking and I got made redundant for my first job when I was 20. And so I worked there. I was like, this is a proper bank. It's massive. There's lots of opportunity here. Now I've got a full-time job. I just need to do it. That, that's all I knew. Like almost ignorance is bliss, luck, my choice. Yeah, so let me, let me ask you, like, did it feel uncomfortable? Or did you, like, was there a feeling that you knew there was something else? Like I'm trying to get to the, the transition into coaching because obviously there's some sort of aha moment that you, you're, it's time to get out of the corporate world. Do you remember that moment or, or was it gradual? What was that? Yeah, where I am right now, timeline wise, I was that was probably like 2005, and it wasn't until 2009 that I I just there was no aha moment. It's just like oh, this doesn't work for me. And it was it's like a breaking point. Yeah, and that and that literally was it was it was broken. I quit. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I quit and then went traveling around the world. Like that, that was, wasn't a conscious, um, this is where I'm moving to. It was a threshold of pain of, I can't stand this anymore. Mm. I was bored. Well, it wasn't painful, I can't do it. I was bored, I was just bored. Which is interesting, right? I was too much certainty, too much like, I was, I was waiting for a bunch of people to get fired or, or for me to get moved to a different role because I was just bored. Like, like oh, we're moving things around, things are changing, we're moving all these jobs to different places in the world. That would have been great. I love I loved the uncertainty, I love the variety of it. The boredom is what got me. That's the first time I've really realized that, I think. The boredom is what got me. So you've been um, doing coaching for a while. Um, when's the last time you've been bored in your profession? Have you ever been bored coaching? <laughs> no, but I can see it much much quicker now, right? At that point, there was time before that, even a couple of years before that, before I left the role I originally was talking about, I was in that role for two years and I was just like, that's how I'm bored doing this now. I've fixed it three times, I'm bored doing it anymore, I'm not doing the same stuff anymore. Yeah. Um, 
and then I moved to that other role in a quick so I was bored. But now but I can see it. The, the boredom or the or getting burnt out, I guess you could think of it like that a little bit as well. Um I can I can see it much quicker. So it's much more intentional about setting up your day. We were just talking about ideal clients and who do you really want to serve the best? That wouldn't have even that type of question just wouldn't have entered my mind until like five or six years ago. Mm. I, I get the sense of uh, intention, intentionality, um, just being super focused on, like that only comes with time, right? So maybe when you first started coaching, it was a new thing to you, just experiencing it, you know, I kind of like this, what is it? Um, and now you're in, you have the ability to not choose who you want to work with, although maybe you do, but um, like who are the people that you're here to serve? Um, like you can be, you can be super focused about that now, but maybe you, you, you had to go on the journey of achieve or of, of experiencing all those things in order to get to this point. Is that fair? Yeah, it's definitely fair. And I think that part of what coaching does is compress that time. Uh, mm. Cause, cause I think the point you're making is that you need the, you have to do it in order to know. You can't just intellectually know it's not good enough. You've got to emotionally know you've got to have experienced it in order to get to that you can't just jump from one point to then so you can't just go from a to a to z you've got to go to points in the middle you can't just and if you did just jump to the end you wouldn't value it anyway you you couldn't you couldn't do it but i think what coaching does is allows you to just compress that into a small amount of time mm. and also just to bring back a point that we made previously and this has been on true seekers a bunch with bringing the right people with you you surround yourself with people who want the same things or can help you achieve that. That's what I think coaching is, right? That you, you, um, we are creating that space to make it okay for that discussion to be had and then to bring the right people. The right people you know, can be your coach, can be your friends, whoever. But it's that challenging of really pushing the limits to the capabilities that is what I love about coaching because I think a lot of people are capable of a lot more than they give themselves credit for. And sometimes, you know, to get that new perspective of coming back to the sidelines with like circling this thing and this thing and this thing, here's, here's your awareness. Now let's set up a, a program. How are we going to be intentional about it? How are we going to focus on it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, and let's think about how that applies, right? It could be everything else in your life doesn't support where you want to go and you come to coaching and that's, the one time a week that you get to be a hundred percent focused on you. That's it. That's you. That's, that's your time. Okay. I've got to really, really like really hold on to that time tightly because that's the time that you set yourself up and then go. Cause, cause the magic, you know, there's magic in the sessions, there's breakthroughs that happen, but the real magic is between the sessions because that's mm. where the action takes place. And so it's, it's like, it's, it's an, it's bookends. You could bookend a year. That, I mean, this, <laughs> it's the wrong time of year to talk about this, but that's why New Year's resolutions don't work. Because you think about it as bookends. You've got one bookend at December 31st and the other bookend at slightly like December 31st as well. <laughs> or January 1st, December 31st, whatever, you know what I mean. And you're, you're only measuring at those times. And so no wonder, no wonder people don't fall follow through because they're measuring once a year if you measure once a year you have bad years uh, if you if you measure once a month you, you don't generally have bad years if you measure once a week you don't generally have bad months and so if you, you get a chance so if you go from a, a loose new year's resolution we've got we've got basically one chance to get that right and it's probably not set up as a good goal in the first place chances of you getting that right are slim to none make that a monthly check-in you've got 12 chances to get it right you make mm -hmm. that a weekly check -in, you've got 52 chances to get that right and it's just keeping those bookends tight compressing time because to your point people are capable of much more than they give themselves credit for yeah well and then when you get a taste of that then it's like well how big can i dream how big can i set my goals and that's what I think that's what's beautiful about what we do at Pro Advisor Coach. We 
you know, maybe only some people have seen the features of this that, that will be viewing this, but um, like gamifying the situation or gamifying your goals is uh, one of the things I think that, that sets coaching apart from anything else or pro advisor coach, at least um, yeah. to be laser focused on what you're looking to accomplish, recognizing that part of that is out of our control. Okay. So what is in our control? What are the things that we can be doing to move towards that goal to make it more likely to be achieved? And then, you know, it's a grade too. So you, you, you identify the activities and then you log them. And then at any point in time, you can ask me, are you being successful? I love the definition of success is uh, uh, a progressive realization towards a worthy goal or ideal. So it's not actually achieving the goal. It's, it's the movement on the way towards that. And that's what, that's what uh, you know, that avatar score health is. And at any point you could look and say, you know, I'm at 95%. I'm very likely to achieve my, my leg goal at the end of the year of whatever it is, number of clients increased or income or, uh, you know, whatever it is. Um, but if I'm at a 40%, that's, that's also the beauty of, of that regular cadence with a coach. Okay. Well, why are we not doing the, the things that we agreed on are going to make you more likely to achieve it? And then it's, you know, maybe some below the waterline stuff that's necessary to break through why that's not happening. Yeah. Your goal is to make a million dollars and you're not going to make it. Do you want to find out on December the 31st or do you want to find out on January the 31st? Mm. Yeah. I like that. 11 more times to try and get it right. Right. Yeah. In fact, that's what it is. It's just bringing the future to, to you now. This is how the future is going to look. We right. it out. It's a time machine. It's a coaching time machine, Josh. <laughs> coaching time machine. I like that. So let's maybe speak to people who are on the fence with coaching. Like why, like to people who haven't chosen it yet, it's more painful to enter into an agreement to be coached than to not be coached. Is that fair to say? I think so. I think we do everything either to avoid pain or move towards pleasure. And that's a concept that most people are familiar with. And again, most people know it intellectually, but how are you, how deeply are you living? I probably say that 10 times a day, you know, something to do with pain and pleasure. And it, it's helpful because clients and people, everyone needs to be reminded of that. Maybe that's only the time, one time we can get to be reminded of it. But it's also helpful for me because I get to be reminded of it 10 times a day as well. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, if, you, if you're thinking about, uh, are you, are you really, do you really have everything in your life that you want? Is that really true? There's, because there's content and then there's fulfilled. Content, another way, another way to say that, is the dreaded comfort zone. I, I liken it to, have you ever been on like a zip line? Yeah. What is that feeling like? Describe that feeling. The first time you, you can remember doing that. When you, what the anticipation of first jumping off, letting go, and it just kind of like, free falling it yeah well, like, try to describe that sensa sensation can you do that well, it's just like it's like a thrill right it's like uh because there, there's some it's not a for sure thing i guess because you haven't done it before okay. um yeah, yeah, yeah right but but it's the doing it or the commitment to doing it and then accomplishing it and going through that feeling of exhilaration that is the opposite of what comfort is to me and comfort is fine. Like we live life, you know, we have air conditioning to be comfortable. We have heat in the winter time. Like you want to be comfortable, but I'm chasing that feeling of exhilaration. I want that as much as possible in my life. I want it all the time. Is there a way to, to achieve that? So that's what I'm constantly trying to improve or, or to get better. And on that, in that process of, you know, going through some difficult things or learning what I have to do to, to get to those things, I get that thrill. And I think that's what's exciting to me about it. I don't know. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, sure. Because it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's those little moments, you know, like happiness overall, that exhilaration overall. I love the way you put it because it's, happiness can feel like this big, huge thing. Like, oh, I'm happy. This label and this big, huge thing. But it's more like it's moments. So as you, you can think about it, like, like did, I, did I go on my zip line today? You know, did I go on my zip line today? How many moments felt like I was in exhilaration like you can judge the quality of your life based on that 
I could, you could set yourself up in the sweet spots to, to know that if I do these things, then I'm going to feel this acceleration, acceleration twice or three times a day. And that's fulfillment to me. See, I like that. I like that concept of sweet spots because along the way, either society or ourselves or whatever, our situations, you know, if we have three, four or five kids running around, it's difficult to have that, you know, maybe that is our exhilaration in a way, but um, you know, there's, there's always these barriers and we can convince ourselves that that's the amount of exhilaration that we deserve or that we, we have earned or that we're valuable to receive when I, it's just not good enough for me. I, I want to see how often I can experience that because that's when I'm at my best. That's when I, I like to live. That's when I'm happiest. That's when I bring out, out the best in other people that are around me. I uh, just, uh, it's that thirst for more and more of that feeling. Yeah, it's the drive and hunger because it, it's like it, it what, it's a scary place to be as well because you're like, what if I lose this? Yeah. What if I lose this edge to want to experience that? And as soon as you lose it, you're in that comfort zone. And the thing is, as soon as you lose it, you don't know what it is anymore mm. because the perspective's gone. It's like, what, it's, it's like, well, if I, if, I, if I start to lose it, then I'll know, then I'll, I'll get back to it. That, that's not how it feels, right? It's like, if I, if I lose it, then I won't care that I've lost it. I only care that I'm going to lose it when I, when I know I've got it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so go back to the zip line example. We get to the end of the zip line. I think it's human nature to like, you want to analyze it. You want to like live in that feeling, talk about it, tell other people how much of it is our responsibility to find the next zip line. And that next zip line might not be a zip line. It might be, I don't know, to get back to, to camp, you got to go over a waterfall. Like we got to seek out these things or how can, what's a good way for people to achieve that exhilaration feeling more often? How can they find that? You've got to live in the trees. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, in that example, you know, if, if you've got to live in the trees where you can see it, you've got to know it's there. Yeah. Outside of mind. You've got to be on the journey. Take right? the, few, the right people with you. Take the right people with you. Yeah. And you've got to be in the environment that supports your success. Uh, if, if you're in a place where, <laughs> if, you, if, if you're in a place where you, you want to look better, feel better and work out and then go hang out in the gym all day, every day. Uh, think about Arnold Schwarzenegger who was a big hero of mine for years ago. Right. The, the, he, he would, there were stories of him of, of climbing into the gym and breaking the skylight to climb on the roof to break the skylight to get in the gym to work out when it was closed. <laughs> if you're in the gym and you're around people, bring people with you, then you're, you're working out. You're, you're going to get better. And you're going to get better. And you it's just like if you, want, if you want to constantly have that thrill of finding a waterfall or going on a zip line, you've got to be up in the trees to be able to see it. And I, right now, I couldn't care less about going on the zip line. If I was up there, that sounds great. And now you're associating me more with it, so I can, I, can, I can start to think about it as well. So maybe this is a life hack that, uh, like, let's, let's compare the two situations. The, okay. the zip line is the actual experience of going down the zip line. The yeah. working out, I think you're looking to achieve something. You're looking to achieve that zip line feeling at the end, whether that's going to the beach, like that feeling of looking good and whatever. But I think the secret, the life hack is the journey to achieving that. So like the working out would be the, you get to have that exhilarating feeling every day by working out. And at the end, it's, it's a, it's a compounded exponentially increased zipline feeling to, I don't know, show up at the beach or, you know, to, to feel that physical, um, yeah. Prowess. Presence. Yeah, prowess. Yeah, that's a good word. <laughs> yeah, I like Absolutely. it. Yeah, if you're if, if, if zip lines your jam, then you've got to fall in love with a climb. You know? Yeah. If working out your jam, you've got to, well, looking good your jam, you've got to fall in love with working out. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that's it. You, you've got to fall in love with the process because that's where you spend 90% of your life. Right. If, if your business is sales, you've got to fall in love with talking to prospects if, you, if your business is construction you've got to fall in love with building houses not having complete houses you know, how about great. how about this if if you're not in love with the process then maybe it's time to take another look right you know, what what are you putting up within the process just to get the result yeah i like that <laughs> a lot. that's good 
Interesting stuff. Uh, this is a unique session here, so I don't know how to wrap this up. <laughs> well, I think, you know, we're talking about coaching. I, I'd love to give people a couple of things for coaching. You know, like, I, I want to share more just about what coaching is and why it's important, you know, because it's so easy when you're deep into it to see that. And, and again, <laughs> with a coaching hat on, like not see the perspective that other people see. So I, I'd like to know what other people want to hear about it and what else can we share? How can we bring value by sharing about it and just talking? And I, I would, so I'd invite people to do that as a takeaway, and also to think about like what what are what are you put up with in your life? Like what what are you what are you letting off your, yourself off the hook with? Mm. Like where are you content? Where are things good? That that's where it like where it feels like kind of warm and fuzzy. That's fine, as you say. Like we need we need air conditioning, we need the heat in the, in the winter. It's fine. But where 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 have you been warm and fuzzy for too long? Mm. Like, where where have you got that niggling feeling that oh, I could do more here, I could be better there? Like if you see someone do something, it's like if you. If you're a person that, I just use the working out example because it's easy. If you're a person that goes to the gym and sees someone that goes, oh, I know I could do that like that. I know I could look like that. Like that's just looking for that tiny little bit of something that's inside you because everyone has that in certain parts of their life. Maybe it's not the gym, maybe it's finances, maybe it's relationships. You see someone, see a couple just walking down the street holding hands like, oh, I don't have that. Maybe I want that. Yeah, it's okay to go home and spend time by yourself. Live life on your terms. Yeah, Weird. yeah. I, I like that's a, it's like a challenge to to get people to be to become aware. Like, I would pose it uh, same question, but in a different way. I guess what's what's your zipline feeling that you're missing? Like, how can you how can you get that? Where, where's your zipline feeling? Like, think about really think about what that feeling feels like. Maybe you hate zip lines, but you get the point with, with the feeling of exhilaration. What, where do you get that in your life? Why, why can't you have more of that? Um, what's holding you back from achieving more of that? And is that barrier capable of being brought down? Or can you, can you maybe do that with, with some coaching assistant? Yeah. Don't worry, no big deal. Just, it's just your life. <laughs> it's just your life. But yeah, maybe maybe it's a call to action. Um, we put our contact information on the on the content, but let's encourage people, like you know, reach out to reach out to both of us and ask questions or see see what you could be doing in your life or share what that zipline feeling is to you. We we want to hear from you. Oh, I love that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, call to action, everybody. Come on, on the keyboards, reach out. Show you your zipline feeling. Come on, I'm get curious. Yeah, I'm going to set up a zip line on my back porch here tomorrow. <laughs> I won't. My, my HOA won't allow that. Anyways, no, I, I think this is another uh, great conversation. I appreciate the engagement. Thank you. Thank you. Always.